Welcome into Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a quick timeout podcast. I'm Tony Miller, and I'm joined again this week by my co-host, Randy Sherman. Big thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. They have their famous $99 team packs, which teams around the country have enjoyed this winter and this this uh, basketball season. Gives you a lot of customization, a lot of nice pieces of apparel. It's got sweatshirts, shorts, t-shirts. You can uh, mix match things as well. To find out more about what 323 Sports can do for your program, visit 323sports.com or you can contact a sales rep at sales at 323sports.com. They'll be sure to do it right for your basketball program. Today's episode is an X's and O's show, so if you're only listening to this, let me encourage you to go back and watch the video version of it on YouTube. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Talked about this several months ago, the spread ball screen. Circling back to that today, Randy, a little bit different though this time. Yeah, we're going to talk about using spread ball screen versus 2-3 zone. Um, I guess maybe a little bit different style of zone attack than you see in a sort of traditional uh, manner where there's against 2-3, you know, usually in three guard front with a high post and, you know, player behind the zone. You know, um, today we're going to talk about maybe how to apply a very familiar man-to-man concept to 2-3 zone. It's um, same but different. Um, So some different things you're looking at, um, just uh, some subtle differences. So, yeah, spread ball screen versus 2-3 zone. Let me ask you this before we start. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you would encourage coaches to use as like primary offense versus 2-3 zone or sprinkled throughout or special or – doesn't really matter. I like I like to use it. Um, there, there's we're, we'll probably won't get to it today, but I like to use it as as um, a mixture of your primary attack versus a two three zone, um, and kind of a way to to uh, get into like a higher high low look. But I think it could be with good shooting and and like really good shooting and and. Um, a a way um for it to be a primary attack um the thing and and we'll see as we get into it the thing to look for is you know the game begins and we run spread ball screen versus two three zone and and what i as the coach and the with the help of the feedback from the players on the court need to to sort of like be watching for is what adjustments that, that my the opposing team or the opposing coach makes to the zone when it starts to get screened so um i don't know that it would it would be a, a primary attack but it might it, it might be something that gets you uh, a possession or two or 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 uh but you know, we'll, we'll see. I think with great shooting, you really create a lot of dilemmas that could take you all the way through a whole game, you know? Uh, so we'll, we'll just take a look at it. Um, I will say a couple of things that about spread ball screen versus two, three zone before we get into the slides would be what we're, what we want is like at a macro level principle is the principle of distortion. So we're using the ball screen to get the two, three zone. So we come down the court and everyone can tell it's two, three zone. There's two guards, two forwards and a center. It looks like the perfect world two, three zone. And we're going to use the ball screen to distort the shape of the zone. The next principle I want is, is one the main goal is to give the forward or one of the forwards um, that's on the double side of our spread ball screen formation, just too many options, like too many guys to guard and, and really kind of put them in a place where they're um, they make a choice, but they really by in so doing give us something else. So put them in dilemmas. The thing I like a lot about using uh, spread ball screen versus two three zones, you can do it right off the break. Like if you it, um, you can you know just your your normal transition lanes. Uh, one thing I see a lot of times against when a when a team. Maybe they've got great tempo and pace against man to man and a zone defense kind of like brings the pace and tempo and kind of brings this lull to the game that like takes some of those type of teams sort of out of their rhythm. And the spread ball screen versus zone that you can run right off the break is a, is a way for a team that likes pace and tempo 
to get right into an action and, and, and right into it, right off the break, five, six seconds after gaining possession, we're already into what looks like um, a drag ball screen, which is another thing I like about spread ball screen versus two, three zone is that we're using kind of a same action to open a possession that we would, would use against man. If we run, if we run, uh, you know, a two side break, we've got a man in the middle who drag ball screens for our, our ball handler against man to man. We're kind of doing the same thing against zone. So the reads and what we're looking at changes a little bit, but it's the same action shape and principles right off the break. Um, that allow you to sort of maybe have some carryover and maintain tempo. Man, I hear that a lot from coaches like, oh, we, we played a zone team and they just took us out of tempo and out of rhythm and slowed the game down. And and this is a way maybe to combat that. Yeah, yeah I like it. Taking notes here, so don't yeah. mind me. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so I guess what we'll be talking about today is sort of like two scenarios that uh, when we – so what we see in frame one of this slide that's on the screen right now is, is we've transitioned to our shape, two and three hit the corners. We got four in the stretch position, five is in the middle lane. We said Main Street, Main Street belongs to the post, so they're in the middle lane, and they sort of settle in between the guards and set a drag ball screen for uh, the, the ball handler on X1, the, one of the guards, get inside ball screen against the 2-3 zone. And then now it's almost like option football, if you will. So in football, the quarterback reads reads the player and they either keep it or pitch it, right? So if um, if we set the drag ball screen and the and the ball, it's not shown here, but if the ball handler can split the guards and get in the paint, that's great. Obviously, obviously we we create a collapse by just sort of like sealing one guard and creating a gap. But what, what will happen most often in the player we're reading is the other guard. In this frame, it's X2 highlighted in white right there. So it's a simple read. We set the inside ball screen. I'm trying to penetrate between the guards. Most often what will happen is X2 will seal that gap, and that's just a straight kick kick to um, the, the high side, the stretch player, player four in this diagram. So then now what we've done is we've we've – successfully given x3 the forward in the zone like too many options they 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 like they can if they run it four to take away the three-point shot well then we extra pass it down to the corner if they stay flat and don't don't run it four on the kick then then four four can take the shot or drive the gap between the guard and the forward um if they if they run at me hard i'm just going to extra pass it down to the corner um, another big teaching point is when when your when your five man sets that inside ball screen, I need them to roll in front of the center. Like I need you to when you roll, get in front of the center. Don't let them front you because then you can post on that player and anyone they might run out to the corner. They might run their center out to the corner if I don't seal him to take away the extra pass. I I, I shield him off by sealing him when I roll. So you got to roll in front of the center, like diagram back up in player one not shown would be if there were a frame five would be if we made if if we kicked the four x3 ran at four we extra pass it down to three and you know maybe that's not someone you would want shooting a three or that or or they can drive it down the baseline and then five would just tee up make and then putting x5 in a position do they stop the drive if they do then i just make the little pocket pass to x5 team sort of eye cutting up the lane line so um, that's that's the progression. Again, the key the key thing is get inside of X1, read X2, read that off guard. They're either going to most often they'll seal that gap. You know, I've I've coached two three zone, and and the teaching point for the guards is don't ever get split with the dribble or the pass. So they're just following their rule. They're they they their partner gets screened. They're making sure they don't get split with the dribble. We kick to X4, and now the forward in the zone has too many options. Should I run at the shooter? If I do, extra pass. If I stunt, extra pass. So that's that's the basic dilemma we're trying to create by using spread ball screen into the double side of a, a versus 2-3 zone. I think one of the hardest things to do is to get the players to understand, like, it's not about the action that's on the ball. It's the action that's coming one or two passes 
once you get past the ball screen. Yeah, zone offense is chess, not checkers. Like you're you're thinking a move or two ahead. So when we do this, this piece of the zone will do that. That means that piece of the zone has to do that, and we're in position to exploit it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll say the second hardest thing for them to get to understand is you don't always have to throw the ball in the direction that you're running. So when the ones comes off the ball screen, you don't always have to be looking in front of you. You can also mm -hmm. be looking behind you behind you. So this typically happens is maybe we in scenario one that we just went over, man, they're, they're, they're giving up wide open corner threes because of the off guard sealing that middle, that drive between the guards. We kick it to the stretch. The forward runs out at that player and we extra pass it and we're wide open in the corner because we've sealed off the center and we're just shooting great threes right there. So coach, it's timeout, timeout. <laughs> like, so what is their possible adjustment? Well, the most common possible adjustment is they'll match up with our two side with the guard and the forward, but now, now they've got to use the center who's got to step up to stop that penetration between the guards. Sometimes not shown here in the diagram, we can, if they do that. So if X1, instead of pinching in to stop the drive between the guards, stays out on my stretch, the forward can then match with the corner player. If the center doesn't step up, good. We'll penetrate right between the guards. If if they do, sometimes we can lob over their head, lob over their head to my roller. Not shown on the diagram, but I, I wanted to mention that as well. But again, it's a simple read. We set the inside ball screen, which we can do right off the break. So we're maintaining tempo and pace. We can do that within four or five seconds of gaining possession. We're running the same transition lanes as we would man against a zone. We're not having to reconfigure and set up our high low. We're using the same action, a drag ball screen that we would likely use in, in a, you know, with a trailer break like this with, with five drag screening for one. So it looks similar. So there's a lot of carryover. But the, remember, the key read is when I receive that inside ball screen, I'm reading the off guard. They're either going to pinch in and that's what happens most often. But sometimes they'll 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 widen out and the center will step up. That needs to be an automatic throwback read for the guard because now they've got enough people on the double side to match up with our double side guard and forward. But if we'll throw it back and run the baseline, as you see in frame one there, now we've created basically the same dilemma. We flipped our double side over there and we've created the same dilemma behind the screen. So we throw it back to player two lifting out of the corner. Player three is running the baseline. They either get short or long corner. I have it drawn all the way to the long corner. And, and we throw it back, and we've got the same dilemma. Five needs to roll in front of the center, seal them off. X2 gets the throw, or I'm sorry, two gets the throwback pass. And now X4 on that side has the same dilemma as X3 had in scenario one. They they either run out at that uh, that that player if they're a great shooter they'll that'll draw a reaction that'll get them to run out there then we extra pass it down to the corner we could enter it into five who's holding their seal on the center we could drive it down the baseline and then i cut five up the lane line or we could just simply shoot the three off the extra pass we've manipulated the zone distorted it by using the screen and then reading who stops the middle penetration way back in frame one <laughs> Who stops that? Well, that that unlocks where we go with the ball. Mm -hmm. And what this looks like, at least somewhat, what this looks like. I have a couple of videos here. Yeah, this video, freeze it right there. So you, what you see is is um, who is that? San Antonio in a in a in a two three zone. Utah. This is this is flipped. They're going left to right instead of right to left, like my diagrams are drawn. But same principle. You see Rudy Gobert setting the inside ball screen on on the guard and and now we're going to read the the other guard the one standing kind of like in the key area number 10 in white so we see number 23 in the utah jazz uniform is the stretch position there's a guy off screen in corner so the double side is sort of coming toward is on our side of the the, the bench so away from the uh or toward us so uh yeah so as you play it you'll see that we set the screen that guard helps in the one circled right there helps in so he stops the middle penetration so so now you can see 
what we're going to do is, is Rubio here is going to pass it ahead to 23. And the forward, if they stay flat like this and don't run out at me, you shoot it. Would you see here? That's why I sometimes freeze it. If you put, if you put, if you've got really strong shooters in the deep corners, that forward's going to be like, well, I, I'm not going to run out at that guy. And well, then, then you shoot it or he'll stay flat. And like 23 could have attacked off the catch right there. Look at all the space through the elbow that they could have attacked as well. So yeah, play it and you'll see, I think the same thing again, kick the forward sort of bluffs at him, but he's hesitant to, to, to go on and go. So same thing right off the break inside ball screen reading the guard who's in again if they're we we use the terms they're either in or out if they're in if that other guard is in we're kicking it to the to the high to the stretch position so right there the guard is in we kick it and you see right there he drives it right off the catch and and plays two on one against the center with the roller here's another clip this is a reject which you can also do you can also reject that um that inside screen here it comes right here screen and they use a pass fake and throw it back so you're just playing off of that action inside screen now now this is this is scenario two freeze it right here for a second so see carl anthony towns is the center in the zone he's now they you know they probably got burned a time or two and it's like time out we gotta we gotta switch this up like we're giving up corner threes, and that's not cool. So they now you can see they've got enough guys to match up with the double side. And but you got to use somebody to stop the middle penetration off the ball screen. And that's that's Carl Anthony Towns right there. And that's that that's he, he rises into a shot, but you can see um 26 down here along the baseline start to rise up to be there for the back action, the throwback. So to complete what you just said there. If he yeah. hadn't shot it, he could throw back forward. here and we could create the overload by the other guy running the baseline. Yeah, 23 would run the baseline and then you'd have the overload that you were just talking about. Right. And the forward would then have to, I think that's Kyle Corver, probably going to run at him if we throw it back. Right. Sure. So, and then, and then there's, they're out of people to, to, to get to the baseline runner. So, yeah, you, you see him shake up. Yeah. Right. You got it. You got yeah. it. That's cool. So it, it begins with a very simple read up top at the onset of the possession. We set the inside ball screen on one guard. The other guard's either going to be in, pinching, pinching that gap, or he's going to be out to match with our stretch. If, if he's out, let's penetrate through there. Great. If we can't, or because the center steps up, throw it back. Did you if rep this in, a lot with fives or fewer players? You can. I like it with fives because you really need the, all the moving parts to get the whole read, right? Like if you don't have one piece of the zone missing, you kind of you need. I, I think you need all the pieces of the chessboard to see how this. That means that guy's going to take that guy in the center might run out, so we got to seal him. So we kind of need all the components to sort of demonstrate all the uh, all the sort of like extrapolations of what would happen after just that simple inside ball screen. Is there anything that you would either warn them about or say if if the players don't do this, then this isn't going to work very well? If if our players, the offense? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I would warn against this. Your your player that receives the the first the very first ball screen at the onset of the possession Sometimes we'll we'll try to just cram it in through those guards, even when the guard is in. Like kick it, just kick it. You know, like if they're in, kick it. That's that was my experience. Sometimes we would try to, you know, pro hop through there, like put our shoulder down and burrow in between the the guards. If they're in, kick it. Um, you know, it can. And there's been some times too where you'll see this. They'll, you'll sit the inside ball screen. The, the guard will stunt and get back to the stretch. We should throw it back, but our guy didn't shake up, hmm. and he's still down there in the deep corner. So you got it. You everyone needs to know what what's happening, right? So like if we set the screen and we see we see that 
that it's in, it goes forward. If we don't need, we've got to see what did that off guard do, even if we're the guy behind the ball screen Mm -hmm. to know to shake up. So, um, yeah, those are two things I would warn about is some, and sometimes it happens where they stun and get back out to our stretch. We should throw it back and we just don't have a guy there to throw it back to because they're still down there. Were you ever concerned about like shooting too early? What do you mean? I'm talking about just playing against a zone team and shooting first side, second side, and that did you ever feel like the game got away from you, or was that not really something? I I mean, if we if we make if we read the floor correctly, set the screen, read the floor correctly, and you know, we set the drag screen, they help in, we kick to the forward. Our thick, quick tip to the stretch, the forward runs at us, and we extra pass it to the corner. I mean, I want that shot. That's why we're doing it. So, right. so that that's why we're doing it. So, uh, I, I would say no. I, I, I my, I'm more concerned as that. Did we assess the situation correctly? Make the right reads and decisions, and take a good shot that was generated because we assessed the situation correctly good i hope that happens quickly um yeah yeah as i alluded to before this is not the first spread ball screen hoops form that we've done so if you're wanting more spread ball screen we talked more about this and you can find that on randy's radius athletics page on youtube can you tell them a little bit about what you have on there on youtube oh man i got tons of stuff um of course all of our hoops form conversations over the years are saved on there um and uh, you can watch those on the playlist and you know man you could you could i we're, we're having a snow day today here in texas so today i you know just you could watch them all day long and listen and learn and, and hear all the wisdom that we you and i have shared over the years um other i, I do lots of breakdowns like the one we watched today i've done playlists of princeton offense transition offense Man, you name it, uh, it, it's on my YouTube channel. So I'd say some of my favorite projects on there, some of the playlists that are, you know, where I went really deep into one team, Princeton offense with Stanford women's team, Nebraska Wesleyan uh, men's team, uh, Syracuse 2-3 zone playlist where I break down kind of like what I – talked about today from an offensive perspective, sort of how to play the two, three zone from a defensive perspective. Um, I think some other things that have been real popular on my YouTube channel have been some of the transition offense breakdowns. Um, So yeah, there's all kinds of basketball content on my YouTube channel, radius athletics. So if you're looking something for just a few minutes, he's got that on there. If you're looking for something a lot, little bit yes. longer, he's got yeah. that on there as well. A little bit yeah. of everything. Zone, yeah. man, everything. You bet. And uh, subscribe, like, share. Love it. Like he said, go to YouTube, search Radius Athletics. You can find all of those resources as well as all of our Hoops Forum episodes. If you're more inclined to listen, you can go to any podcast platform and search a quick timeout, and there you'll find the audio version of our show. Thanks so much for Randy, all his resources that he has been sharing. We will attempt to be back again next week. Keep paying attention to our socials to see when that will be. For Randy Sherman, I'm Tony Miller. We'll talk to you again next time on Hoops Forum.